can't remember if it was Christmas of 1996 or 1997, but I had a five or a six-year-old little girl by the name of Natalie who asked for one thing for Christmas. We had gone from Vernal, Utah, where we lived, to Salt Lake City on a trip, and during that trip we'd gone into a mall and gone shopping. And she had seen one of those really nice snow globes with two ballerinas that spun around and danced as an Elvis Presley song played. She wanted that. That's all she asked for. And so my wife and I, after budgeting and counseling and planning together, we finally, on another trip to Salt Lake before Christmas, went into that store and bought that snow globe. Natalie was so excited on Christmas Day. She got this snow globe and just time after time she would wind it and play and we would listen to the song and the, the little ballerinas would spin around and the snow would fall down. It was so wonderful. Well, when it was finally time for her to put it away, uh, we took it upstairs to her room and put it up on her dresser and said, now, now, Natalie, you have an older sister and an older brother. When you want to get this down, either get one of them or get your mom or I because it's up high and we don't want you to drop it and break it. She said, okay, Dad, I will. Well, it wasn't uh, very many hours later that same Christmas afternoon. I was taking a nap. I'd been up late helping Santa the night before. <laughs> I was tired. And I was awakened from my nap by the sound of shattering glass. I sat up from the couch where I looked and I looked over and there was Natalie on the bottom step having come down from upstairs, standing on the step. She had dropped the snow globe and sparkly shiny glass was running all over the tile floor. I stood up and I said, Natalie! And immediately, immediately, the Holy Ghost whacked me upside the head and said, Brother Walquist? Dad, she's your daughter. Be kind. And I tiptoed through the broken glass and I scooped her up in my arms and I hugged her. I said, Natalie, I'm so sorry I yelled at you. And, and kids are so wonder to, wonderful to forgive quickly. She just said, can I get another one? <laughs> and, and I said, well, sweetheart, we'll have to wait and see. But that moment was a moment when the Holy Ghost taught me to be a better dad. She's your daughter. Be a better dad. It's a snow globe. Be a better dad. Part of what I love about studying the family proclamation and the conference talks that we get to read in these beautiful talks is helping us to learn how important family is to our Heavenly Father. Just listen to some of these phrases from the first paragraph of the proclamation. We, the first presidency in the Council of the Twelve Apostles of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. I love taking the proclamation apart line by line. And in that first line, just saying, we're united. And even before President Nelson asked us to use the name of the church, they were using the name of the church. Maybe we should have caught on. And then the very next two words, solemnly proclaim with seriousness and somberness that marriage between a man and a woman is ordained of God. I love the next line. The family is central to the Creator's plan. At the very center the very center of everything that God wants for us is family, which is why the Holy Ghost chastened me so I could be a better father and love my daughter. And remember, it's a snow globe, and Natalie's my daughter. And he, Heavenly Father wanted me to treat my daughter like, like he wants to treat me. Oh my goodness. God would lose his voice if he yelled at me every time I did something stupid. And so he was trying to teach me, look, look, Brother Walquist, you've got to be a better dad here. God wants that for each of us. He wants us to have eternal family. And I think that's so important. I'm going to include a video clip from Elder Oaks's talk 
about the, the plan and the proclamation. He bore his testimony that the proclamation on the family is a statement of eternal truth. As we're studying the proclamation, I remind us to keep in mind what President Benson said now 43 years ago, but from Elder Oaks' talk 40 years ago, that every generation must face a generational test. A generational test. And President Oaks declared, quote, I believe our attitude towards and the use of the family proclamation is one of those tests for this generation. Then he added, I pray for all Latter-day Saints to stand firm in that test. As we study the proclamation, paragraph by paragraph, know that God wants us to have family. And know that we are all having little tests in this life to be a better daughter, to be a better son, to be a better husband, to be a better wife, to be a better father, to be a better mother. I pray that we'll pass the tests as they come.